Hey, it's time for VoiceOver Body Shop. We got a great show tonight because we have our guest Shelly Avellino, who's supposed to be here somewhere. Say something, Shelly. <laughs> hello, hello, I'm here. Where's, where's her She's picture? Here, I have my camera locked on because oh. I am celebrity tonight. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. Here's Shelly. Hello. Hi. There, Shelly. She's our guest tonight. No, she's over here. All right. And we're, <laughs> we're going to talk about all sorts of fun stuff. We'd love your questions here on VoiceOver Body Shop. So if you're on Facebook or on our chat room at our website, ask questions so we can ask Shelly those questions or ask George and I. And right. so why don't we just get the show on the road since George is on the road anyway? I am. Right now. I'm in Seattle tonight. From the outer reaches, they came, bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week they allow you into their world, bringing you talks with the biggest names in the voiceover world today, letting you ask your questions and giving you the latest information to make the most of your voiceover business. Welcome to voiceover body shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training, J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters, and VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. And here we are. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VO. B.S. All righty. Well, 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 well. A busy week here at the voiceover body shop. Busy here. Busy. And you are... Here, we have to show the space I'm, needle here. You're in Seattle. That's right. If I stand in the right place out, out on the street here, I can just about see that, that space needle. Yeah. I'm uh, staying in friends at home in Capitol Hill. Uh, it's a great neighborhood. You're not far from much of anything. And... Uh, just getting to enjoy some time with my daughter up here. She's actually upstairs playing with her friends who live in this house, which is really cool. So it's been, it's been a really cool visit so far. But yeah. uh, I'm in my Seattle finest wearing a hoodie sweatshirt. So I hope you like it. 90 degrees in the backyard here at the body shop. <laughs> I had an interesting thing happen to me this week. A friend of mine back in Buffalo sent me a picture of this guy. I don't know how well you can see that. Does, does he look familiar? Yeah, just a tad bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, it's, this guy apparently gave lots of money as a philanthropic thing many, many years ago, like 100 years ago. And my friend's yeah. now the, the executive director there, and he's like, hey, can you read like his bequest to our annual dinner? And I did him <laughs> one better, and I, you know, I did the video is him. I found Warren G. Harding's office behind me, did the whole thing in sepia tone, and it should be, it's really cool. And they're loving it uh, back in Buffalo. Anyway, that's the fun stuff we get to do when you got a green screen. Got a green screen. Yeah, because exactly. I, I, I can be in Seattle. You can be in Seattle. I can be in Seattle, too. I know. You know, it's funny. A lot of shows have kind of moved on, quote unquote, from the green screen. And I think it is just a it's just one of those fun things that just makes, <laughs> you know, when you see our show, you're going to see us on the backdrop of something. Oftentimes, we'd like to see your booth. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, we'd like but it. But it's fun to show a little weird locations that I happen to be. So this is true. Well, I'd like to introduce our guests. Now, here, here, this is a young lady we've known for many, many years. Uh, and uh, we know her as a voice actor and 
as this wild woman we run into at voiceover conferences with the bright <laughs> red hair. Uh, but she's doing some really interesting stuff, and we want to talk about that. Let's welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop, Shelly Avellino. Shelly, welcome. Hello. It's so weird to see you on the screen and not see you in person. Yeah, well, you'll, <laughs> we'll, you'll see me in a couple of weeks. That's fine. I know. I know. I'll get my Dan fix. So that, it'll be all right. That's right. There is a legendary picture of you and I smoking cigars, though. That, I know. That what just appalled that? both of our spouses. But <laughs> um, anyhow. But, I mean, I, I've talked to you and met you many, many times, and, you know, we, we've seen each other so many times, but I don't know a lot about you, except that you mm -hmm. occasionally gra drag people off and say, let's go smoke a cigar. Um, tell me where, <laughs> where you're, you're obviously not from this continent. Tell me a little bit about, about your background. Oh, my gosh. Um, you mean you can't hear my Texan accent? No, not, not, not <laughs> at all. <laughs> no, I'm originally from Wales. Actually, I, I was born in Germany, funny enough. Really? Uh, Horses, and I lived in Germany till I was six. Um, moved to England for a few years, and then I moved to Wales when I was nine, and I lived there ever since. And ever since until I left um, to do my degree. Um, and what you don't know about me probably is my degree. There's going to be something naughty about this. I know <laughs> my degree is in ceramics and glass blowing. Don't even silence. <laughs> silence. There's a degree. In, well, I can see it's ceramics, but in glass blowing. Glass blowing, yeah. And I got cool. that in, in Birmingham, in uh, in England. And about seven years after that, I'd always wanted to live in Hong Kong. And so I moved to Hong Kong when I was able. My you just wanted was, to live in Hong Kong. Ever since I was about six years old, my father okay. was stationed out there, and he used to send back. How, how's this for, for storytelling? He used to send back tapes of him telling us stories about this beautiful country, the food, the people, all of that stuff. And I fell in love with Hong Kong through his storytelling. And I've always wanted to live there ever since. So when I was old enough, I thought, well, sort this. I'm just going to rent my house out and off I go. So I did. I just went with a suitcase and stayed with a friend, got my teaching English as a foreign language. I was already musical. I, would, I play many musical instruments and sing. So I taught music and English for years. And I met my husband there, who's a pilot from the US, from Utah, funnily enough. And um, yeah, we moved around a lot, lived all over the world, very lucky. Um, lived in Thailand, Hawaii, uh, then Singapore for a year. And from Singapore, we moved to Vegas because that's where my husband's uh, part of his family was from Vegas. So we moved here about oof, eight years ago, nine years. Wow. And that's why I found voiceover. Yeah. And I've been doing voiceover ever since. Yeah, you've been doing, living in all the slummy places. You, you haven't oh, been yeah. in Greenland or anything like that. No, thank heavens. But it is on my bucket list, actually. Greenland's supposed to be lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on where you are. Uh, anyway, so how did you drift into our wonderful world of voiceover? Oh, actually, that's a really funny story. Oh, so I was no. actually looking, I was actually looking, I was actually looking for a singing teacher at the time. And I, I was on Meetup. Do, 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 let's have a look on Meetup. There's got to be a singing teacher here. And um, I found Melissa Motes, who used to be a singing teacher on cruise ships years and years and years ago. And she was running a voiceover workshop from her home at the time. And I thought, oh, voiceover. Huh, what's all that about then? So she basically said, come for your first lesson and bring a book that you're reading. And I was actually reading Harry Potter at the time. How stereotypical is that? I was like, how embarrassing. So I was sat in this room with like 15 to 20 people who all seemed to know what they were doing. And I just felt, oh, I have no clue. I was shaking. I was just terrified, terrified. And I went into the booth and I read, you know, a paragraph from this book. And I just never wanted to leave. I thought, yep, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. And then there was no stopping me. I was literally like, you know, car on a fast track. Whew, that was it for me. Wow. How long ago was that? That was eight years ago. Ho holy cow. Yeah. Yeah. Time goes fast. That's amazing. Since you're only 25. Uh... Oh, that way, thank you. <laughs> I paid you so much money to say that beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> You smooth talker, you. <laughs> I, I, I pride myself in my smoothality. Anyway, uh, so we, we wanted to talk about this this thing that you're doing now. It's called Bridging the VO Gap, which, yeah. I mean, is that like 
some a knowledge thing or is it a geographical thing? It's kind of both. Okay. So I'll, I'll tell you when it, when it started because I actually have Tom Test to thank. I don't know, you know Tom Test, yes. lovely guy. And it was in fact my very first FAFCON. Oh my God, when was my first FAFCON? Uh, 2013 maybe? I forget. I was really naive. I was really, you know, not long in, in my voiceover career. And um, Tom Tess came running over to me in Fafcon and said, hey, Shell, you do marketing at different countries. I'm doing a breakout session. Why don't you just come in and just have a chat with people and tell them what you do? And I'm like, yeah, sure. So I went in, you know, just being me. And I just sat there and chatted to all these people for about 15, 20 minutes. It might have been longer than that. Um, just going through what I do every day. And being British in the US, I um, I don't get as many uh, auditions as people um, who are on US agents. I've got a lot of US agents, but I don't get that many British auditions. They're few and far between. I do a little bit of the pay to plays, but I'll go, um, obviously back then I did more, but I have find most of my own work. I'm non-union and I find most of my own work through marketing and I market like a boss. Like, I really enjoy marketing. A lot of people don't. I really enjoy it. So I literally just talked through um, how I marketed internationally. And everybody seemed to be like, oh, my God, that's a thing? Like, you can market outside the U.S.? Uh, I, you know, a lot of people didn't even think about that. So it's something that I've always done. And when I started working at the voice actor studio here in Vegas as a coach, um, I started teaching international marketing and marketing in general here. And it just kind of, I've been doing it for years. And then I just suddenly thought, well, you know, I go to all these conferences. There's lots of voiceover people that can benefit from this. You know, we all want to increase our client base, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I thought, well, why don't I just come up with a name that's, you're not only bridging the distance, but you're bridging that gap of knowledge between marketing in the country that you live in and also marketing outside of the country that you're living because there are differences yeah so yeah you know that's that's kind of how it came came about really yeah. now now i've i've done a lot of work all over the world and i think that's one of the great things about our business is that our marketplace because a lot of people are like well do i go to a local radio station I'm like no your marketplace <laughs> is everywhere because we have the internet and i remember early on when i started doing it you know online it was a lot of a lot of international work, and my one of my biggest clients was in India, and mm -hmm. uh, I was doing work in China and Finland and places like that. I won't say where I got them from, but uh, <laughs> you know that company has changed its spot since then. Uh, yeah. But I did seem to get a lot of work from pay to plays in 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 Europe and various other places. Uh, and it really wasn't a whole lot of marketing. It was generally, you know, just answering auditions and people will hire me because, right. you know, we're, we're better than everybody else. Uh, but now, because there's so much competition, I imagine that seeing as you really enjoy doing the marketing, you've probably got some very interesting strategies for doing that. So I, let me ask you this. Is there a difference between international marketing and marketing locally? And, you know, here in the U.S. And, and what is the difference? Yeah, I think I definitely think there is. And I think the main difference is when you market outside your own country, um, you may very well be marketing to countries that English isn't their first language. Number one, that's the big one. Right. I mean, obviously, Australia and Canada and other places that speak English. But if you go outside of that, you know, there's a big difference of contacting production companies, um, or advertising agencies when their English is limited. Um, even if they can speak English quite well and do business, you know, you have to um, make sure that your emails are a little simpler in the grammar that you use and also be aware of, you know, their culture. There's a lot of different cultures, ways of doing business in different cultures. You know, you don't want to approach, let's say, an Eastern European client in Russia the same way as you would contact somebody in the US because that's not you know, it's not the same language that you use. You know, the Eastern Europeans don't want the, what I call the fluffy email. I, I kind of use the word fluffy, you know, like, oh, it was so nice to see your website. And I really like this video that you did. No, the Russian people, they don't respond well to that. Once you've got to know them, they do. But for the most part, they just want to know who are you, what do you do, how much is going to cost and when can you do it? You know, they're a little bit more direct. So it's just getting to know 
like the countries that you're approaching, what their rates are, how they do business, knowing when their holidays are, knowing what times they work. And the biggest one for me, I think, is if you're doing a lot of email marketing, which is what I do a lot of internationally, is knowing and getting the time difference right so that you're contacting them on their time zone, not yours. You know, that's a big, that's a big game changer. It is. Yeah. And it's, it's something I run into all the time because I do work with, with agencies in London. And uh, recently I had one in Norway. <laughs> and you know, and, and it, I think it's like a nine hour difference from here in California. Right. And right. they're like, well, you know, can you do it like at 6 a.m.? And I'm like, yeah, I'll you know, no. <laughs> bring, bring coffee and I'll, I'll be fine. What was really weird about it was doing this session where the engineer could speak most could speak English very well, but everybody else was talking in Norwegian. So you're, you're like, uh, you read the line and, the, and you're, you're hearing this jabbering in Norwegian in the background. And it's like, yes. And That's it went on for like four or five minutes. And then the guy says, they want you to do it a little faster. Yes, there's a lot of that. So you have to be aware of that. You know, that goes on a lot, especially a lot of my French clients do that. So you do have to be aware that you might be doing live sessions at two o'clock in the morning. You know, you have to be prepared that if you want to market internationally and get international clients, that might be a thing. So you have to be okay with that. Um, there's a great website that I want to put you guys onto, which will really help you kind of, you know, have a look at different cultures and different business practices. Um, and it's called, I'm going to spell it because it's really weird. Comissio is C-O-M-M-I-S-C-E-O dash global, G-L-O-B-A-L dot com. And it's a free business guide and it tells you everything, different business cultures. It even has, I think, um, a currency exchange on there. I use XE dot com, but it's a really, really great place just to go and just find out a little bit about the country you're going to be marketing to. It's a bit like, this is the best analogy I can describe the differences. When you have a piece of copy in front of you um, as a voice actor, you know, you ask yourself the question, who's your audience? You know, who am I, who am I talking to? What's the message I want to get across? And more importantly, how do, you want some, how do you want them to feel when they hear your voice? And it's exactly the same in marketing. You know, who's your audience? Who are you marketing to? You know, what do you want them to feel like when they open your email? Do they want them to go, oh God, somebody else trying to get their voice in my business? Or is it, you know, oh, this is really interesting. Oh, okay. I like what they're saying. You know, you just got to kind of be really real aware. And the best advice I can give when you're, when you're marketing in general, yes, you want to make it personal, but you want to go a bit deeper than that. I spend a lot of time on research and I really, really find out something that I'm very interested in, in that client. I'm interviewing them as well. I want to know whether I want to work with these people. So I really do take my time and I'm very genuine. I want to find out something genuine that I want to talk about. So I always end my emails with an open question, something that I've seen on their website, or if I've looked up the creative director on LinkedIn and he has a hobby that I'm interested in, it's really genuine. I don't just like do the template of the email and take out two lines and put in something, you know, oh, I like that video, you know, because it has to be genuine. Yeah. And that's what, that's how I've had such a good rate on email marketing. So I'm just genuine. Yeah. I, it's always fun meeting people from other places and then, yeah. and then, you know, and then if you have some cultural literacy, which clearly you do since you've lived in all these places and, uh, and that gives you cultural literacy, you know, and I, and I, you know, I tend to know a lot about different cultures and stuff. You throw something out there that perhaps they didn't think you would know. Right. You know, like some Indian festival or exactly, like, you know, things like that. And they're, they're like, oh, you know, just about be that. knowledgeable. Yeah. Just be knowledgeable and professional and come across like an expert, like you've done your research. And I go even further than that, even. And sometimes we were having a bit of laugh about this. So sometimes I will just say hello in their language. And goodbye in their language or I'll, I'll, I'll put a little line in there you know looking forward to hearing from you in their language do not use google translate people <laughs> i've got into big trouble with that i use a couple of apps i use uh, i translate converse which is really great they just come out with a new one um i translate voice three which is really good so you know little little tiny things like that really really make the difference yeah if you're just joining us here on voiceover body shop our guest tonight is Shelly Avellino, and uh, we're talking about international marketing because, cripes, there's a lot of countries out there. Uh, 
<laughs> and they all seem to they all seem to have broadcasting systems and internet, and they got to advertise their stuff. Um, and a lot of actually a lot of agencies in Europe work for American companies. Yeah, they do. And, and you'll and you'll find that sort of thing, uh, which which is absolutely fascinating. Of course, this last one I did in Norway, they were saying, you know, can you do it in a southern accent? And they paid, played me a scratch track of this Norwegian guy doing a southern accent, and I. And I'm like, Norwegians should not try to do Southern accents, <laughs> which, yeah. which got a good laugh in the other end. Uh, you know, and, and of course, as you were saying, uh, you know, don't use Google Translate. I might use it, say, how do you say hello and goodbye and things like that. But they, they generally speak English, although some of them just not as good as others. Uh, yeah, most of them do. And sometimes, you know, if... Um if you get a website that's uh, predominantly in their language and there's no translate button and there's not a lot of English, then maybe, you know, that, that will give you a clue about whether they work with a lot of, of British or, or US or Australian people. So just be aware of that and, you know, how they write back to you, you know, be conscious of that. You know, if they write back and their English is okay, then fine, reciprocate in the same way. It's just, you know, it's, just, it's like their conversation. If they come back and they're kind of nice and chatty, then you can be chatty back. It's, it's, the, same, it's the same deal as when you market here. Yeah. If any of you out there who are watching the show live on Facebook or on our website, uh, and you'd like to ask Shelly a question, which I'm sure many of you do, uh, you can put it in our chat room, either on Facebook or in our, on our website, and uh, we'll be happy to answer that question, we'll present that to Shelly in our next segment, so stay tuned for that. Um, if, where do you start looking for international clients? I mean, we, we know who the big companies are here. Uh, yeah, that's, the, but that's a big question, right? Where, 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 do you, where do you start trying to find who's going to look for voice talent in various other places? Well... <laughs> For me, what's worked for me um, over the years is production companies are huge. Um, and I mean, they're huge here too, but they kind of work a little bit like agents in the rest of the world, um, especially in Europe. So I contact predominantly advertising agencies and production agencies, especially production companies. And Google is your friend, but not only Google, Google in different countries, um, google.com.hk for Hong Kong dot com dot sg for singapore de for for germany you know make sure you use a local search engine otherwise you're just going to get your look you know your us results come up um if you're not sure what the country's best search engine to use go to search engine colossus.com that's a great place to start and it'll give you lots of um local search engines that you may not know about and they will give slightly different results i also use a lot of directories too um, directories are a great place to find um, listings of things. Hotfrog.com.au for Australia is a really good one. I kind of like that. KFTV is a good one. There's so many. So directories are a really great way. And then just do your research. You know, it, it's I spend longer actually doing my research than I do sending my emails. And it should be that way around. You know, I may only send 10, 15, or even sometimes five emails in a day. But it's all about quality not quantity yeah really yeah once again if you've got a question for shelly throw it in our chat room right now because we really want to we want your participation in the show and, and you know especially those of you all over the world because we know there's people watching in australia and new zealand and you know in the canary Islands. because yeah, it's lunchtime over there that's right yeah, yeah they're on the beach like drinking cocktails right now on a on a, on a monday well, it's like, probably yeah, Tuesday I there by now. <laughs> it's lunchtime. It's yes. Tuesday at five o'clock somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, are, what do you have any interesting stories? You know, what's what's some of the weirdest stuff that you've come across in in, in working with some oh, some foreign think, foreign clients? I think I told this at uh, Vio North. Um, <laughs> this is one of the funny stories. So I was researching um, this. Actually, I didn't tell this at Beer North. I told a different one. This one, I was trying to contact, get a, get a contact with this guy in a production company in Bulgaria. Ah. They did children's books. And I was really into, into children's books at the time. And um, I really wanted to get on this company's roster. So I thought, right, I need to really kind of see what this, this company is about. So I did lots of research. I found the creative director on LinkedIn. And I, on Facebook, and I, I, I looked at this guy, and 
and realized right at the very bottom of his hobbies, you're going to know exactly what I'm going to say now because I just gave the game away earlier on, that he also did glass blowing. <laughs> so <laughs> I swear you not, I kid you not. So really marketing to me is opening up a dialogue to create a relationship. Isn't it, of course, you're selling something or promoting something, but initially your goal should be to start a conversation. So I thought, right, okay, I'm going to talk to him about glass blowing. And we talked about glass blowing for about six months. But then as soon as he had a British job come up, I did over 80 children's book with this guy. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Honest to God. And it's just from literally just chatting about bloody glass blowing. <laughs> like, mm. Yeah. So, I mean, that's what I talk about being genuine. Find something that you really, really want to talk about. And when you want to talk about it and you're fascinated, another one, somebody had a parrot in their studio and I wrote back saying, oh my God, how on earth do you keep the parrot bloody quiet? You know, I have enough trouble with my cat snoring, right? And they come back and we talked about their parrot for like three weeks. I mean, you know. That's great. Once again, our guest is Shelly Evelino. We're talking about international marketing, as she calls it, bridging the VO gap. And again, if you've got a question, throw it in our chat room. We're going to take a break right now, and we'll be right back with Shelly after these important messages. Before time began, there was VOBS.TV. Watch or else. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Diggies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. So, you've thought deeply about it. You've discussed it with friends and family. And you've decided that it is your future. Audiobook narration. And the doors to that future swung wide open for you this morning. Registration for the upcoming ACX Masterclass is now open. And there's a happy twist. Register right now, and David and Dan will pay the first $300 of your tuition. No strings attached. That offer is only good through Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Pacific time, so you have to act right now. If building an amazing audiobook narration career is what you dream of, or if your current audiobook narration career isn't all you want it to be, this is your shot. Go to acxmasterclass.com to register for the 2019 ACX Masterclass. That's acxmasterclass.com. Class begins this coming Monday. The $300 tuition payment special offer is only good for the next day or so. Take that step. Walk through those doors and register for this amazing four-week class. Visit acxmasterclass.com. That's acxmasterclass.com. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do... They break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. 
This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The Voice of Our Body Shop. And we're back. Yay. For Shelly Avellino. Yay. Hey, Shelly. George, you've been pretty quiet back there, but then again, you're far away. Well, I'm I'm keeping an eye on a lot of different windows at the same time, making sure I'm not missing questions and yeah. and all that. But um, I'm listening closely and enjoying the conversation. Yeah. Now you don't do any marketing, any foreign marketing, but do you think you should? Um, yeah, I mean, I certainly have reasons to because, as of course, I don't, I sadly don't speak any other languages, but English is spoken around the world, and um, there's a lot more people I could be helping out there if they uh knew about me so yeah i mean I, I think i'm at that point where there's only one me and um i've luckily this time of year i'm as about as busy right now as i can handle but it would be a smart thing to do as the as the year winds down you know and business starts to wane as it always does to to come up with a campaign for more of an international audience you know hitting australia new zealand england even japan and there's a lot of expats in china and a lot of americans and english and english speakers all over the world so it would be, it would be a wise move yeah interesting Wait, where where would george where should george start there shall oh my god i mean the list is endless but yeah you're right there's expats is a whole other thing too you know there's expats all over the shop and there's voiceover i mean china hong kong japan like you said singapore there's a big voiceover community in all of those places. You know, India, as we know, too, Australia. I mean, yeah, it's just a case of starting and seeing what's out there and just dipping your toe in the water. And you'll be surprised at how many people out there will need help. Yeah. I'm curious. I mean, I've you know, my experience with a lot of foreign clients is that they tend to not pay as well as <laughs> American clients. Yes. And, and I, and our, our, our friend Ramesh in the Canary Islands talks about how, you know, the farther oh, north in Europe you go, the better they pay, and the farther south you go, the worse they get. Yeah, yeah, it's it's definitely a thing. I mean, um, usage and worldwide rates is a, is a discussion that's been going to be going on forever, I think. And you know, there's some really great rate guides out there with GVAA and uh, Gravy for the Brain and all of that, and. Uh, usefee.tv is a great one but when it comes to countries outside of those um yeah it's it's pretty tough um you've got to know the the country and the way that i find rates for the countries that i work in is i actually talk to the local voice actors that work in those countries because they're the ones that are going to know what the rates are right you speak to production companies they want to try and get rates off you first so you never really know what to go in in on unless you ask for budgets which you should be doing but it's really tough and there's no real kind of hard and fast rule i think for a lot of countries in europe anyway you know netherlands and switzerland tend to have a bit more money as do germany you go to poland and some of the eastern european countries not so much so you do have to know you know where you're going to start marketing if you don't want to work the rates of those countries yeah. if you're union and um you're not doing any marketing because you're with an agent and you're in a big major city, then that's great, but you should still be marketing because we don't know where the history of agents are, are going to go. So still market yourself, um, but market countries that, you know, will pay your rate. So it's, it's tough out there. You've got to kind of know your stuff before you start even picking up the, you know, Google and searching. So, you, yeah. Do you get approached by foreign companies? I mean, I'm I'm always getting solicited by a Chinese company here, and there, and then they offer these rates that are like, are you kidding me? Yeah, yeah, all the time, all the time. And I say no far more than I say yes. I do. Um, and China's a a, a funny one. Um, China don't have a union. You know, it's illegal for them to have a union. Um, in Hong Kong, they have a kind of like a. Um, groups that are not really union so they don't have standard rates and stuff like that and they don't really do usage so it's 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 completely different so india is the same although they do have usage on some of their cable channel tvs stuff um stars has an indian channel so it's it's just again knowing your audience knowing what's out there and doing a bit of research before you start marketing to know what their rates are and finding rates i just go to the voice actors and i i uh I source talent too. So um, I cast a lot of talent through Sweet Rush, who I work with. And so while I'm looking for talent, um, international talent, I will gather 
rate sheets. So when I get approached by the certain country, I go, oh, what's the standard that the voice actors are charging these days? Let's take a look. And that gives me really good grounding to go in. Once again, if you've got a question for Shelley, throw it in the chat room right now. We'd be glad to entertain it. George, we got some questions, starting with uh, Mr. DeGoli out there in the desert. Oh, Jack. Yes, (laughs) we do. First one I see is from Jack, and he wrote in a little bit ago. Um, he says, how do you deal with the cultural differences that affect how clients approach business? Um, as an example, how do you deal with uh, what for us is prolonged and drawn out price negotiation or differences and what clients are willing to pay outside North America and Western Europe? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely tough, you know, to navigate. Again, it's knowing what you're prepared mm-hmm. to do work for. You know, if you're not prepared to work for a certain rate, then you wouldn't probably go and look for work in Poland. You know, you'd have to be be sure that you're approaching a country that has the um, money to pay the rates that you want to charge. So, again, it's all about going to that um, website that I mentioned earlier or doing a bit of research on the country's economy, seeing, you know, talking to production companies and seeing what their rates are. Um, it is tough knowing the culture of different businesses too. And this website is great. It gives you a little bit of an insight on how different countries like to be approached. For instance, India love to do everything over Skype. They will just chat over Skype. They won't use email. Everything's Skype. Da-da-da-da, type in Skype. They want to chat to you before you do a project. Um, China, Hong Kong, and Japan, they use WhatsApp. They do business over WhatsApp. So it's just knowing how they like to be contacted even. You know, email is good, but sometimes they don't like email. Sometimes they want something a little bit more instant. So it's it's just knowing um, how that country likes to work. And you know that by just doing research. Did that answer his question? I think so. Maybe. It did. Partly. Well, he's also <laughs> asking, you know, what... You know, how do you deal with what for us is a prolonged and drawn out price negotiating for differences and what clients are willing to pay outside of North America and Western Europe? I mean, how 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 do you deal with that? And like you said, you say no sometimes, but do you- I do say no, but I do educate them too. Okay. You know, I educate I them. Know. Yeah, I do educate them too as much as I as much as I can. Um, you know, I point them to various um, rate cards that I use, other rate cards. But what you have got to understand is these. These, some of these countries outside of North America, they will not have the budget that the U.S. has because their economy is different. So if you are expecting the same rates as the U.S. in certain countries, you're never going to get it, no matter how much you negotiate. So that's about knowing your audience before you market. So there's a lot of that out there. Um, but also the drawn out thing, I nip that in the bud right up front and I'll say, this is my rate. This is what I charge. If I know that it's a country that will have, like Switzerland, for instance, they, they're they a pretty wealthy country and um, they like creativity and they usually have a good budget. So I have no problem going in with my rate. I'll educate them about usage um, from North America and the UK, point them in some directions if I can't get that. But I'll usually be very standard up front is, look, this is what we expect. This is what I I charge as a full-time voice actor. And I have like a template that I send out saying, you know, this is, how we do usage, da, 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 da. but sometimes it's different, and you, you know, you you can't work with somebody sometimes, no matter how much you educate them. But I educate as much as I can to yeah. try and bring yeah. those prices up, you know. Right, and and you do it without insulting them. It's like you know, this is this is yes. the rate that we work with here. I mean, can we meet in the middle somewhere, or at least right. two thirds? And I always want to be educated by them too. So I always say, look, this is how we do it. I'd love to know how you do it, so we can educate each other. You know, I cast talent. I would love to, you know, because some of these production houses, they might have talent that I can use. So I want to know their processes and their rates too, because it's going to benefit me. So it's like a two-way thing for me. I'm getting something out of it as well. So they like like that a lot, knowing that I could possibly be getting talent from them. So that kind of helps me. Absolutely. There's uh, one here from Get Fred's Voice, George. Yeah, he asks, uh, do you find the need to correct poorly translated scripts? <laughs> and if so, yes. could you? That's a great question. Yes, I get that a lot. As you can imagine with uh, non-English speaking, I do get scripts that are poorly written. But you know what, guys? Charge for it. I charge wow. for it. It's an extra thing that I charge for. Hey, you know, I really like the script. It's not written 
quite right grammar wise i actually offer a service to to do that for you because sometimes they and they literally jump on it oh gosh yes please could you do that that would be great because they struggle with it you know some companies will struggle with it so i do as an extra add-on service yeah yeah i i I deal with that all the time especially say uh on auditions from from foreign foreign companies uh and they send you these scripts and it's like do they really understand what it is they're trying to say here and well most of the time yeah who are they trying to communicate with i mean those are relevant questions too well a lot of these companies sadly you know they they may not have anybody that has good enough english so they'll just throw it into google translate and you can tell sometimes you can tell it's just been thrown in so i'll write politely back and say you know if it's an audition obviously i'm not going to charge them if it's something little i'll just correct as i go and if i can't get hold of the client because of the time difference i'll usually just give them two little takes it's usually um plurals and you know female or male you know they get that mixed up quite a lot so it's usually it's little things but sometimes i have no clue what they're trying to say and in that case i'll go you know i I can't really make this out you know we need to you need some help here absolutely all right got another one from laura schreiber uh, how often does Shelley recommend following up with international clients once they offer to add you to a roster? Does it vary oh, by question. culture? I'm curious if it's different than, you know, protocol for U.S. clients. That's a really good question, Laura. To be honest with you, I haven't seen much difference on the follow-up. Some clients don't like you to bug them quite as often. Um, again, it goes back to the Eastern European. You know, they don't like to be bugged that much. You know, they, uh, they're not quite as forthcoming with uh, staying on their radar. So, yeah, I suppose it does change a little bit. For most of my clients around the world, you know, it's usually a three every three months once I've, after the initial follow-up of two weeks, if I haven't heard from them, once I'm on their roster, I'll get back to them, you know, once a quarter, sometimes more than that. But I never, ever get in touch with them unless I've actually got something genuine to say or to share. You know, they still know that you're getting in touch to stay top of mind, but I'll find an article that I think they would like, or I'll go on their website and see what they've been up to on Twitter. You know, I make it really relevant. And and I think that really helps. But no, there's not really that much difference by culture, really. All righty. Once again, if you got a question, throw it in the chat room. Uh, I got one texted to me because someone couldn't see how to get to the chat. And uh, the question is now in another window, so i got to go find it. Um, this is Joseph. And Joseph asks, um, do you coach? <laughs> That's the question. Do you coach, Shelly? <laughs> I do. I do. I do coaching. Um, I do coaching through the Voice Actor Studio website, um, uh, thevoiceactorstudio.com. Um, over Skype there, or you can go to Bridging the VO Gap and you can schedule me there too. Um, I do our sessions and, you know, whatever you need. Yeah, I do coach. Ha ha. Ah, fantastic. So uh, f- f- finishing up here, what is the overwhelming theme that you would like to get across to people who are thinking, I need to break out of, you know, wherever it is I am and really pursue the rest of the world? Oh, that's a good one. Uh, You know, with any kind of marketing, consistency is key. So when you're starting an adventure like this, you know, be realistic with yourself and just start small, but do a little bit every day. So my advice would be when you're starting to conquer, because it's huge mountain, it can be really scary to know where to start, right? So it might be something as simple as, okay, I'm going to pick one town in one country. And you might even do it alphabetically, but start... like that start slow and then literally start on your google searches or your other local search engines get companies that you want to contact and just slowly go through really researching and just do it do it slow and just you know and i I use email marketing a lot that's my thing for international uh, marketing some people like to do um in person, if you've got the money and the travel points, hello. Um, I like to do that too. And when I went to Hong Kong, I did loads of marketing while I was there and it was great. Um, some people like to use the phone and international, it, it's not that pricey. If you use Skype, you can add um, money to Skype and on your account and you can phone anywhere in the world. But you have to remember you want to phone, phone them on their time zone. So, but if you're really great at cold calling, why not? You know, do what feels right for you, but just take it slow, take one little chunk at a time. Yep. And 
Yeah. Do yeah. you? I, th I think the question is: Do you offer coaching in this particular marketing about international I do. marketing? Tell I us do. I do about that. I offer international marketing coaching. I offer general marketing coaching, and I also do performance coaching too, um, international and here. So, I let you go through whatever whatever you're dealing with. Um, I go through how to, you know. Um, email templates if you want some help with that you know how where to start on search engines um not only that you know there's lots of differences being paid internationally as well you know know the conversion rates when you're giving rates and quotes do it in both currencies guys because you know they don't want to have to look at the u.s currency and go well what the hell does that mean in rubles i don't know what is that right so there's, there's lots of other little things that you need to think about when you're starting to market internationally um, and how to get paid. Some countries pay in 90 days, some pay in two weeks, some pay, you know, there's all these little differences that you need to kind of learn to know. So I go through all of that kind of stuff too. And it's, you know, I coach beginners and veterans, so it really doesn't matter. You know, everybody's got to start marketing somewhere or they're continually marketing. You always have to feed that pipe. You never stop. Otherwise, nothing's going to come out the other end. Yeah. Yeah, I, I find it fascinating. I've never gotten stiffed by an international client. Me neither, ever. It's funny, right? They respect us. Amazing. They do. They so, do. They're pretty good. Yeah. So if someone wants to get in touch with you about this, where would they go? Ah, you can find me at www.bridgingtheviogap.com or shellyavelino.com. You can also find me on Twitter at Bridging Vio Gaps. Uh, Shelly Avelino on Instagram. I'm everywhere. Just type Shelly Avelino in and you'll find me. You've you've been everywhere and you're still everywhere. I know. This one's slipping in under the wire. Okay. Folks. I, I One more question here. This could be a quickie um, from Focus Locus. Are there any technical aspects to keeping it, to keep in mind when working with international clients? I know you ah. touched on you know India like Skype for example. Yeah. Good Anything question. Else? Yeah. Good question. A lot of these clients that um, if you're working out of the country that you're in, unless it's um, Australia or the UK, actually even the UK, um, ISDN is not used very much because of the cost. So a lot of companies will just use Skype to do live recordings um, so that they can just hear you and you record on your end. IPDTL seems to be the preferred choice in the UK these days. Um, you know, I mean, it depends whether you have an IPDTL account, but it's, it's a really great tool and you can use that. There's so many streaming options. Source Connect Pro is a real love um in germany and netherlands and places like that so it's kind of interesting you know they do have their different quirks um yeah did i answer that i guess yeah they all have their own they have their own way they that they like to work quirks. and yeah 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 Makes keep, sense. keep a list <laughs> I can't, i've got a list and you know sometimes they use their own software too sometimes they'll send you a link and they'll have this software you've never heard of and you'll be like what's that and they'll just send you a link and he'll connect you and, it, and it's all good so you know, I get that a lot too. Yes, very good. Well, Shelly, always a pleasure to be anywhere near you. Oh, thank uh, you, Dan. You too. Uh, looking forward to seeing you uh, next week at WovoCon. And, uh, yes. We're going to have a great time at there. But thanks for being with us tonight and, uh, and imparting your knowledge. Well, thank you for having me. I've been wanting to come on your show for years, so I'm really glad I made it. Well, you've made another thing off your bucket list. Yes, exactly. All right. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Shelly. About time, later. right? Yeah. So glad we got Shelly on. Thanks for doing it, Shelly. Right. And I'm, I'm sad I'm not going to see her at Wobocon, nor you, but I will. I did get to see her at VO North, so that ain't so bad. Yeah, that's good. All right. Well, George and I will be right back to wrap things up right after this, so don't go away just now. This is Anthony Mendez, and you're watching Voice Over Body Show. Hey, we're here at Dan's workstation to talk about voiceoveressentials.com. That's Harlan Hogan's place to you because they have a great deal for this week on the amazing Centrance MicPort Pro 2L. The MicPort Pro 2L is the all new USB mic preamp that makes it easy to record on the go and at home with professional quality. The state of the art MicPort Pro 2 turns your phone, tablet, laptop, or desktop into a professional recording studio. Smaller than most microphones, it's feature-rich, easy to use, and travel-friendly. Now you can record directly to your phone or tablet and leave that laptop behind. And for a limited time, get a free VO cap with the purchase of a MicPort Pro 2L. 
Just add both to your cart and your discount will be automatically deducted. A built-in rechargeable battery sets the MicPort Pro 2L apart from the other portable audio interfaces, making it your ideal companion for the road. Get a free VO cap with your order of a MicPort Pro 2L for a limited time only. Free shipping in the USA. Thanks, Arlen. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected Expected talents, coaches, and industry insiders. When you join the online sessions, bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. Um... Hey everybody, it's that time of the show where we get to talk about Source Connect. You just heard Shelly mention it that there's a lot of clients in Europe, Northern Europe, a lot as well, that use Source Connect Standard and Pro. So if you're watching the show tonight and you're looking to work with international clients, clearly this is a platform that should be, you know, one of the tools in your toolbox to be ready for working with those international clients. Um, it is it is really used all around the world. It's heavily used in the U.S. It's definitely taking over for the popular in terms of popularity over uh, the technologies that are waning, like ISDN. And uh, you should just get it set up and get it running on your computer right now. You can run it on Windows or Mac, and you can get it up to speed without buying a thing because you can go to source-elements.com, get yourself a 15-day free trial. Put Source Connect standards license on your Mac or PC. You don't need the iLock key dongle thingamajig to do it. And just have it all ready to go. And that way, when a client asks, do you have Source Connect or agent asks, you can say, yes, I do. And at that, you just have to activate your license and off you go. So go get a trial right away. Get up to speed with Source Connect. Be ready to work with clients around the world. It's the tool you got to have. Just got to have it. We'll be right back. I think I heard the voice of a body shop. I did. I did hear the voice of a body shop. Beetle body shop. Ah, another technological miracle. Seattle, Las <laughs> Vegas, Southern California. We do it every week. Somehow it always works one way or another. <laughs> the Comcast gods are with us tonight. Thank you goodness uh <laughs> next week on this very show it'll be tech talk number 19 which you and i will be recording next so don't go anywhere in case you want to watch it live or if you want to ask some questions uh mm -hmm. and then in two weeks joe davis will be here for his annual visit after wovocon and uh so if you've got questions about websites eat a man oh yeah I got to chat with him a bit via North. He, he knows, as they say, he probably has forgotten more about this than most of us will ever know. So <laughs> wait, you can be here to ask your questions. Oh, absolutely. We have a great time whenever he's here. Uh, who are our donors of the week? Looks like we got a couple of them in there. As These are names that if you guys listen regularly, you'll probably recognize. But there might be a couple new ones as well, as, which is, as such as uh, Dwayne DeSalvo. Valerie Burgess, Stephanie Sutherland, Shanna Pennington Baird, Antland Productions, Don Griffith, and Harlow Rodriguez. Yeah. Thanks so much for the, those contributions to keeping our show uh, happening with the technology running and dealing with all the little hurdles that we have to do. All that little extra uh, income to the show really does help. It, yeah. It pays for some of the resources we need. You know. Unfortunately, we didn't get to go to Uncle Roy's barbecue this weekend. 
which is something you and I always like to go to, but sounds like it was a good time. <laughs> Indeed, it always is. I always have that horrible FOMO. This time of the year is the worst because not only is it like the busiest in terms of work, but the most stuff is happening, it feels like. There's so many cool things to do. Yeah. And so the FOMO foams up <laughs> this time of year. Mm, well, just mop that up. That'll be fine. Uh, You're missing out. Yeah, we'd love to get you on our mailing list as well. I'm sure you probably get uh, some tweets about that every now and again. But if you're on our mailing list, you'll know exactly what's going to be coming up on our show every, every week and uh, and get the inside scoop. And it makes it easier for us to communicate with you. So uh, there's a spot right on our website, voiceovervobs.tv, and it says subscribe. Makes it a lot easier. Uh, hey, show us your booths. Well... The Space Needle is kind of cool. We'd really like to see what your studios look like. Don't be shy. Uh, send us a good landscape picture, not portrait, of your studio. Uh, and show us what a fine, creative person you are and how you've built your voiceover shrine and have it highlighted here on VoiceOver Body Shop. You can send that to the guys at VOBS.TV. Uh, George and I fix studios. You do that, George? Yeah, I'm known to do that from time to time. And you can find me over at georgev.tech to uh, get me uh, lined up with you for your support needs. I can do, um, if you can grab me occasionally, I'll do emergency support. A lot of it's scheduled um, and some of it's on site, but a lot of it's remote. So you can do all that, do all that over at georgethetech.com com or george the dot tech dan also does that over at his place on the web homevoiceoverstudio.com make sure you go over there and uh, if you want to learn more about how to record properly in your home voiceover studio uh in a one-on-one -on -one situation glad to help you out uh, you can contact me there or drop off a specimen of your audio at uh, the specimen collection cup at the bottom of the home page i'm also offering now uh audition direction uh, if it's always good to have an extra ear to listen to you doing your auditions in real time, because it's amazing how you don't hear the mistakes you're making or how you're not connecting with the copy. And, uh, it helps to have someone like me who can listen and go, you're getting it or do it a little bit more like this, a little bit more like that, because self-direction is really, really hard. And my new website, the VO director.com will be the easiest place to go and you'll be able to schedule your time with me which is really really kind of cool uh want to be in our studio i guess being at five o'clock we haven't had a lot of people come in to watch the show live but we would love to have you here if you're in the greater los angeles area uh to sit in on the show and ask questions and interact with our guest uh again write to us at the guys at vobs.tv and uh tell us when you're available and when you can be here and we'll We'll send you the secret address of our secret clubhouse. You can come in here and do that. Uh, well, that's going to do it for us this week. Uh, Tech Talk is coming up next, so stay tuned for that. Don't go away. Um, right. We've got to thank our sponsors too, right? Oh, absolutely. We have to thank Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VOHeroes.com. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And J. Michael Collins demos. All righty. Also, the Dan and Marcy Leonard Foundation for the betterment of live and recorded webcasting. Uh, Mike Merlino wasn't here, but his mom, Sue, is our amazing technical director, and she is on the ball tonight, as she usually is without coffee, uh, doing a great job, and we really appreciate that. And, of course, Lee Penny, simply for being Lee Penny. Well, that's going to do it for us right now. Uh, you got to... This is not an easy business. Cripes, I've been doing it for years and years, and it still amazes me how much we need to learn and how much we can change with the times and stay up to date with it. And we'll help you out here on VoiceOver Body Shop. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop. Or VO. Yes. See you later. Yay.